Okay, so I guess I'm a kind of an accidental game designer. I'm actually a PhD student in art history. Although I must say that as, uh, as my job as a lecturer in Brazil at the Unicinos University, one of the programs that I teach is the game development program. But that's also more of an accident than anything else. Um, so this game is a, that I'm going to present is a board game, the Currency Lab. And I created it because I really kind of wanted to have people learn more about alternative currencies. And I thought a game would be a much nicer way than just having like a talk or like showing some kind of slides, PowerPoint, something like that. And then with the game, people could really engage into the subject. And because most people don't know much about alternative currencies, they know about, you know, they live in their lives, there's lots of money involved, like euro or whatever other currency that you're familiar with. And if I ask, like an audience like you about uh, what's your experience or your examples that come to your mind about alternative currencies, what you have to tell me. Okay. Chicken. Chickens? Who said chickens? Chickens. Okay. I want to talk to you later about the chicken currency. It's an ancient currency. Yeah. So, Bitcoin. So, right now, Bitcoin is a very popular kind of alternative currency that is in, you know, in the buzz, in the news, and people uh, heard about it. So, who here heard about Bitcoin? Mostly. Yeah. Okay. Who here heard about the Vergun? What? Aha, uh -huh, one person. Um, what about frequent flyer miles? They're actually considered a type of currency. And they're exchanged for many things today, not just you know, for, for seat, seats in an airplane, but you can actually donate and, and buy other things with your frequent flyer miles. And apparently, all the frequent flyer miles in circulation or there exist there today is about 700 billion dollars so that's quite a lot of money in miles uh, and the, the Virgo that I can't really pronounce that well um, is actually a, a currency from Austria our neighbor and that was developed when there was a very bad recession and there was no shillings going around and people like couldn't do anything basically because they didn't have money and they wanted to, let's say, you know, like uh, they maybe raise chickens and people wanted to eat chickens, but nobody had the money to buy the chickens, so maybe they just had to, like, you know, get rid of the chickens. And then the mayor decided to create this currency and has a really nice feature. If you look at the, like, the little stamps, so it kind of rotted. You had to, um, every week or so, uh, or every month, I don't remember this one actually, let's see. Every month, yeah. So every month you have to put a little stamp, otherwise it will devaluate. It will have this negative interest built into it. And then people use it really fast. They didn't want to keep it, they wanted to use it because otherwise it would lose its value. So that's kind of an interesting feature of this currency. Um, and this is the currency from Brazil, where I'm from. And it's the Cubo card. And it, it allowed lots of art to happen, like music and things in Brazil. But apparently, people who, lots of people who received this currency couldn't really do anything with it after a while. So this is a restaurant owner that has apparently 2,000 meals worth of Cubo that he cannot get rid of. Uh, so there's like all this, this, creating a currency is really not an easy task. It's very, very hard. And even the currencies that we have now, like the euro and the dollars and everything else, are really flawed. They have lots of problems, and you know we, we should be able to create something better. Um, and the game, the currency lab, is about that. So in the game, everybody is a currency designer. Um, I think I have another example. These examples, by the way, are from this little book that comes with the game. So it's uh, so you can read about examples of currencies from the past and from the present and know some of like get some inspiration about what, what's going on and you know how could you uh, overcome 
challenges that come your way as a, as a currency designer in the game. So maybe they're similar to some challenges that were already faced and, and maybe successfully overcome or not. So this is a current uh, currency that happens right now in Kenya, the Bangla Peza, and it had like a rough start because the government thought it was uh, counterfeit money, which it wasn't, it was a completely different type of money, but they still like put the people in jail and stuff like that. So, but they were, you know, they, 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 what did they do? Like, who of you have done a crowdfunding campaign? That's what they did. They did a crowdfunding campaign. And they got um, some money and lots of, um, you know, um, media. So they could get lawyers, you know, get the people out of jail, relaunch the currency from the, the start, and now it's going, and it, it seems really promising, actually. So, this is the test, the kind of first, test play of the currency lab that was at the, this year's at the Transmediale. Um, and in the game, uh, you get to be the currency designer, like I said, and your currency has kind of funny names. So for example, you can, you can be knowledge box or a new communism. And it's like, a, you know, it's a big surprise what the name of your currency will be. That's one of the fun things of the game. And that can actually um, inspire you on, on the way you know, to, to fight the, those challenges that come your way. Um, so here are some of the challenges. So the game has challenge cards and, and then um, strategy cards that you use to fight, the, overcome the challenges. So, you know, it can have like really uh, difficult challenges, like the government is about to declare your currency illegal, like, you know, what happened in Kenya. Or maybe, um, maybe people think your currency is against their religious beliefs. And as far as I know, that hasn't happened yet to any currency, but it's totally possible that this, you know, could be a challenge for a currency in the future. So, here are some strategies that um, you can use. So, get famous people uh, to praise your currency. And, or also you can get a grant by framing your currency as an art project. That's, you know, really useful. Some, some currencies have used those strategies, actually, they are, based on real things that happen to currencies. And some are maybe, you know, new ideas. Um, and you can actually devise your own strategy. So you can really be creative. If none of the strategies there you think are the best, you can make your own. Um, and the card before is also, maybe you also get a bonus instead of a challenge. You know, it's not, you know, the path to a successful currency is really hard, but good things can happen. So maybe, you know, there is a recession, people don't have money, and they really need to use your alternative currency. Right? So that's a really good thing that can happen to your currency. Um, so the game, like I said, is a board game, um, but you print it yourself. So you, it comes as a PDF that you download. Uh, there's a black and white version that is featured here and the color version. I think I brought kind of like a mix of those by accident, actually, <laughs> to play it tonight. I was going to bring just the color version, but I think I mixed it a little bit. Um, but you can download your copy, and it's like, uh, pay what you want. So you can pay zero, and then it's free. Or you can pay something else, and then that's what you pay. Um, and right now, at this site that I'm using to distribute, it only accepts euro. But if you want to pay with Bitcoin or something else, I'll be very, very happy. To Dogecoin. accept that, Dogecoin. Dogecoin, I accept everything, uh, chickens, anything you want. Uh, actually, I'm really interested in more like smaller quail. I'm thinking about raising quail, so I, I only have a dog, so I don't really have space for chickens. I wish I did. Maybe soon. Um, what else? Oh, okay, and this is the for today. We're going to test also the game pieces. Um, they are also going to come in the future release of the game. Right now you only get the PDF, but you will get also the files to 3D print your game pieces. These are the, the first tests. I'm already thinking about the other ones. They're supposed to be like a test tube, like the logo. Um, yeah, they might get a little bit evolved before they are released, but we're going to test them and, and figure out if they're good. That's the last slide. So I'm a bit ahead of time, doesn't matter. Uh, this is coinspiration.org is the website where the game is available. And if you want to contact me, I'm lenara.com. Lenara
Yes, and I think we're, we're doing one of the tables over there. There's like a little um, sign saying, right? Next to the bar. So we're going to be playing the Currency Lab if you want to, you know, become a currency designer for a couple of uh, minutes tonight. You can, we are very welcome to come and help me improve the game. Uh, yeah, and it's really nice to have, you know, people because of uh, game design experience who give hints because, like I said, I'm an accidental designer of games, so I'll be very happy with your feedback. And if you have any questions right now, you can ask me as well. Should currencies always have a numerical value? Uh, like, how do you suggest we measure things like positive energy, uh, teamwork, or love? Okay, yeah. Uh, so he asked if currencies should have a numerical value, like uh, how can we measure teamwork or love, and what was the other? Uh, positive energy. Positive energy. So, okay, it's interesting. For example, positive energy maybe doesn't have a value, but it has like a positive or negative kind of axis that you can move around. <laughs> but, um, no, it's really interesting because um, there is also this concept that is uh, the gift economy. So it's an economy with no really like number currency, but just people exchange things and circulate, they just give things to each other. <coughs> and there is, this creates like a gratitude and a reciprocity and people giving things. Uh, and, and, and it's kind of like a wave of, of just, you know, giving all around. And that's how many economies actually work and still work. Uh, but I guess less and less, and it would be nice to have a little bit of that coming back. So uh, you might argue that then it's not a currency. Like if it's a currency, it must be, you know, have a number. And right now, uh, people who study these things, they say that money has three functions. So one is a unit of value. That's one of the functions, functions of money. So I guess that one needs a number attached to it, okay? The other function is a medium of exchange. So for that one, you don't really need a value, just need to allow people to exchange things. And the third function is a store of value, so I wanna save things. And I guess that doesn't need a number. So the money we have right now needs to have a number, but we can totally create you know, means of exchange if you want to call them currencies or not, without any numbers connected to them. Okay. Favorite currency? My favorite currency. Hmm. No, no. I, I actually really like the gift economy a lot. Um, I don't know. That's, that's really tough. You know, your favorite currency. <laughs> Um, I'll think I'll, I'll think about it and maybe I'll answer to you the later. Currency. The kissing currency. Okay, he, he decided already. That's my favorite currency. But the, the spit guy, the guy's the the, currency. Is cool. No, I was in this um, I was at this event in in the UK and they have like a future of money competition for artists to kind of envision possible artistic. And this guy decided to propose money encoded in bacteria that lives in our mouths. So that was his idea. So if you wanted to, you know, you could kiss someone and then it would exchange the bacteria and you would do like an exchange. Uh, if you want to give like a tip to, to, to a Oscar, you like spit on the, on the, the hat. Um, and there was like all this, <laughs> this crazy, you know, uh, um, evolutions of why, how we would do all these transactions that we do right now if the currency was in the form of bacteria in our saliva. So, yeah. so that's, that's actually one of the reasons why I study uh, artists, because they come up with really crazy ideas that might not be feasible at all, but really makes us think and, and give us, you know, inspiration for things. Wait, he, he has raised his hand first. Do you accept barter? Do you accept barter for your game? Barter? Burger. Bur yeah, burger. Burger? Yeah. Like a, like a, like a... Burgle. Ah, burgle! Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, sure, you have some. I was told you, if you have, like a, like a paper Maybe burgle? I, I could get some. <laughs> yes! Very nice, yes. 
I don't know. <laughs> yes. Is that a question? I wanted to tell people here, I was an early alpha tester of this game, and I was blown away about how engaging people were in this game. Yeah. It was, it was impossible actually to do like one round without getting into like a huge debate over what the next person, what the next move should be. And so uh, it was incredibly inspiring to see which game. This game. This game. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, actually uh, that uh, that was going to be part of my presentation. I, I totally forgot to look at my notes, and I forgot to say that. Yeah, yeah I forgot to say. Uh, sorry, but that uh, one of the the thing, like the rules of the game, is that you know you have to use the strategies. But there is no like table that tells you how successful each strategy is. It all decided in the game, in a discussion. So you have to convince the other players, you know, and, and they, you know, kind of debate back and forth the, with them. And depending on how, how well you can convince the players, that's how many <coughs> points you get to move forward. So that's like the whole kind of rule of the game. And also like uh, the gamers, other games can help you. You know, even you're competing, but you're also helping each other. So you have a hand of strategies, but you don't need to use from your hand. You can actually borrow a card from someone else. And when you borrow a card from someone else and you're successful, that person's currency also advances a little bit in the game. So you kind of can play together also. You can compete, but also collaborate. Yeah, yeah, I guess the point that she was also making is that everybody, in order to move forward in the game, everybody has to agree on the next move. No, men, they can disagree. They can disagree, but you benefit. Yeah. You benefit from everybody agreeing on the next move. Which, in terms of, someone was asking before about, does it have a social? Does a game have this? The previous game where it, does it have a social aspect? I think the social aspect is really amazing here because it's not just a little point of someone liking your thing. You, when you engage with other people in this game, you actually also are, you, you, you experience their value systems. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's an interesting experience. I recommend one. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>